this video today, I will be teaching you exactly how to start a notebook business from scratch. This will be a full tutorial and it will help you to get out of your head and actually start that business. Hey, if you're new here, hey, 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 if you are just coming back, my name is Shanice and my purpose is to ensure that online money makers are able to maximize their presence and increase their sales. And as I said, for this video, I really just want to present the information to you in a way that enables you to get out of your head and actually start that business. This is our agenda for today. So we're gonna go over some housekeeping items, talking about deciding on your niche, finding a manufacturer or going handmade. Then we're also going to be talking about packaging, pricing, marketing, and launch. Housekeeping. All right, so the very first thing you need to do when starting a business is you need to choose a business name and a legal structure. So this looks like, are you going to be a sole proprietor? Are you going to be an LLC? Do you have a partner that you're working with? But the most important thing here as you're looking to get started is actually choosing that business name. When you do come up with your business name, you wanna make sure that you immediately head to Google to check that the domain is available. You do not wanna choose a business name that you cannot get the website for because that will eventually cause confusion for your customers. And sometimes when they're actually searching for you, they're gonna land on somebody else's business page. So you want to make sure that you find a business name that is completely unique and that the domain is available. You can also check with your state to make sure that the name is available to be registered. So that would be the next thing that you need to do is register your business with your state. Now I know that this does cost some money. You don't have to do it up front. If you want to, you can. But personally, when I was starting my business, I made a little bit of money first before I actually went ahead and got the business registered. But this is completely up to you and whatever you feel most comfortable with. Once you get your business registered with your state, then you are able to apply for things like your EIN. Now your EIN is really great for tax purposes. It's also going to be great for setting up your finances. So your EIN is basically like the social security number of your business. Now there is an additional filing requirement if you're starting your business in 2024. I don't know too much about it, so I have not included that detail on this slide, but I will draw Drop some links for you in the description. Once you have your EIN and your business is registered, then you are able to set up things like a business bank account. Now I use a bank called Novo. I will also link that in the description in case you want to check them out. But I have a business debit account with them. And then later on, I went ahead and I actually set up a business credit account to so like a credit card for my business using Capital One. So I'll drop both of those links for you in the description in case you are at that stage looking to get either a credit or a debit card. So the last thing here is really going to depend on your state and different requirements. So check to see if there are any like licensing or permits that you need to get, such as like a reseller's permit or something like that, that you need to get in your state if you're looking to start a business. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about choosing your niche. Now, due to the simplicity of notebooks, it is actually really essential that you find a niche and you try to create your books in that niche. So some examples could be inspirational notebooks, self-help notebooks, organizational notebooks, composition notebooks, and you can add different things into this. So you could say like inspirational notebooks for kids or organizational notebooks for kids, because honestly, a lot of kids struggle right now with keeping up with things. So let's say you do like a custom interior notebook where you have this broken down where the kid can have a section to write in their homework. They can have a section to write in their chores. They can have a section to draw or doodle or color something. So this will be like a book that is there to help kids get organized. Coming from the classroom, I know that even eighth graders struggle with organization. So if you can create a business, a brand, tap into a niche like this, you may find lots of success. Next, you need to find a manufacturer. So who is going to print your notebooks 
for you. Now, I use manufacturers for my business. I use them to produce a number of different notebooks from wire bound to paperback. So you can find manufacturers by researching online. If you head to Google, I'm pretty sure that, you know, with a little bit of digging, you can find good manufacturers. Now, what you want to make sure to do once you find one is to request a sample. It's really, really important that you request a sample so you can see exactly what the product looks like with your unique design. Now, I like to find my manufacturers first before actually designing my books. And that is simply because different manufacturers are going to offer different sizing of books, right? So some may have like six by nine, others may do like a four, a five. So if you have like Canva Pro, of course, you can always resize your book. But if you don't have something like Canva Pro, then you want to find the manufacturer first and see what they offer. So that way you can create your book to their specifications. Some manufacturers are also going to want a front and a back cover on the same page. Maybe they take a PDF, whereas other manufacturers may take something like a PNG and you may need to upload the front cover and the back cover separately. Now, some manufacturers will also offer standard interiors, meaning you can only get dotted line graph or something like that. You cannot customize your interiors, whereas other manufacturers will allow you to customize your interiors. So it's really important that you find your manufacturer first so that you can create your book to what they offer. Now, if you're looking for manufacturers as you go to start your stationary business, and if you rather go with trusted manufacturers as opposed to Googling this information on your own and spending all of that time, then I highly recommend you getting a copy of my ebook more than a vendor list. Now this is of course a vendor list. So I do have manufacturers in there that I personally use to print my notebooks, but I also give you tips and tools to help you get started. So this is a really essential resource. I actually tried to pack lots of information in there so that you can get the most out of it. And these are some of the products that you can make using this resource. So I have made a number of different types of journals. So wire bound, spiral bound, paperback. I've also made sticky notes, which was the main product in my stationery business, as well as notepads. And a lot of times I did sets, right? So I did a sticky note, a notepad, and a journal in a set together. And those were actually really popular. So people really like when they can have like three items that kind of look similar or follow a similar theme. So that is something that you can do in your stationery business as well. Now, of course, you don't always have to use a manufacturer. You can 100% go handmade. However, going handmade will require crafting. So having some type of crafting skills, like I've seen people who would go to the Dollar Tree, buy the Dollar Tree journal, come home and then either sublimate that journal or wrap that journal. So there are lots of different things that you could do if you're looking to make just different types of notebooks. I've also seen people purchase machines and do these things things at home. So you can make spiral bound journals at home. You can even do wire bounded journals at home. And um, these are actually going to cost about $150. Now, as we jump into pricing and packaging, you can literally price your journals for whatever you see fit. I typically charge anywhere from $16 to $18 for my wire bounded journals. If I'm selling something like a paperback journal, then I usually charge about $10 for those. I typically don't sell those outside of Amazon because I don't find that people really purchase them outside of Amazon. Just because on Amazon, you can get those journals for like $6 dollars seven dollars so i find that the demand isn't really there for paperback journals outside of amazon kdp however wire bounded journals really sell a lot outside of kdp now in terms of packaging, there are a couple of different things that I like to do. So whenever I'm selling my wire bounded journals, I either put them in cellophane bags, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, guys, I'm bad at pronunciations. So this would be like an eight by 10 bag, you slip it in there and you just kind of close that bag. 
or I would wrap it in brown paper. Now I'm doing this because with the wire bounded journals, you don't want with the tossing that it, you know, it, the cover rips off or anything like that. So I like to either put it in a bag or wrap it in brown paper. Now, when I'm shipping these in a set, I'm using boxes to ship these because I'm putting other items in there. So I'm putting it in a box. But whenever I'm shipping just the journals by themselves, I like to slip them in 8.5 by 11 bubble mailers. Now it's really important that you use bubble mailers here and not poly mailers because poly mailers are just too soft. And a lot of times what happens is that the journal will burst through the bag and you don't want that happening because then you have to reship the product and all type of nonsense. So I would use bubble mailers here for the extra protection. And of course, this is the more affordable option. There are other options out there because you can use those hard cardboard um, shipping packages, but I find those to be really expensive as opposed to the, the bubble mailers. So that's kind of why I go this route. It really depends on your budget. I only charge $4 for shipping, and so I cannot afford to spend too much money on packaging that's just going to go in the trash. Now, I, as you can see on this slide, I am not recommending any additional items. So I don't recommend starting off your business with like custom package tissue or I don't recommend any of those things, custom packaging. All of those things are expensive and it doesn't really matter when you're just starting out. Honestly, to me, it's a waste of money. Well, as you grow and as your business gets bigger and you have you know, more consistent sales coming in, then you can invest in those things because then it's not going to cost you that much because you can afford to order like a thousand bags or you know, 500 bags or something like that. But when you're just starting out, you don't, a lot of people, at least a lot of people don't have the budget and you have to order things like 10 and 20 and that's really 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 expensive and cuts into your profit margin all right now in terms of marketing and launching you have a bunch of different options now i would recommend using tiktok here and again building out that brand that is what i did in my business so, so like this video i'm shipping a set so someone ordered it and i decided to make a pack with me video so this is also showcasing to people everything that is actually within this set um, so that they can purchase it if they like it and this is also a great way to get content because this is easy content you're going to be shipping the packages anyways so why not make the video now other videos that i like to do are like vanity videos so i just take the product and i just show people either the cover if it has a nice message on there so this one says i know who i am so this is just a cute message that is shareable right so people will see this and they will share it so there are a number of different types of videos that you can make and of course if you want to talk more with me about how i marketed in my stationary business and just some tips and tricks always um you can book a consultation with me now that is pretty much it you guys as i said i wanted to present to you a no fluff walkthrough of how to start your notebook business i really hope that this video you know is helpful for you and that you are able to get started leave me your questions or comments you know on this video i really appreciate the interaction with this go ahead and hit that share button if you don't want to start a notebook business but you know somebody who does so go ahead and share this video so other people are able to get this information now, until next time, my name is Shanice. It has been a pleasure sharing this video and this information with you. Go ahead and give my channel a subscribe. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Don't forget that you can always check out additional videos here on my channel. Bye!